Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days, or today's second video, uh, which will take us from the 20th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles ready to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, takes us into the early part of April. Talking of weather next four weeks, we have just released the ECMWF 30 day look ahead uh, for the UK and the rest of Europe too. So uh, have a look out, see what's going on. Very typical weather for uh, sort of early spring uh, for the next four weeks. So have a look out and see what's going on um, there. Uh, right, so we're going to start off with the Arctic Station observed and forecast chart. Perhaps size a bit of a change on the way. So the black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. Red lines are the end where GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, it's just an index that's reflecting the absolute state. It's not driving anything in its own terms just tells us what the atmosphere is doing. When the Arctic Oscillation is positive, we've got low pressure up over the pole, and uh, consequently we will strengthen the zonal westerlies through the mid-latitudes, and uh, low pressure over, over pole will tend to keep cold air bogging over the pole and the Arctic at uh, this time of year, through the winter. Conversely, when the AO is negative, have high pressure blocking up over the pole, blocking is the route to push cold air out of pole, and down into mid latitudes had a very positive AO through this winter. Uh, so back at the first of December, we can go back to that just there. We see that uh, the Arctic Station pretty much on the first day of December went positive, and it's tended to stay there ever since. We did get a little negative spell of uh, AO conditions in the second half of December, particularly around Christmas. Uh, but after that, the AO took off again, and through January and February, we have just had a continuously positive, and at times record-breakingly positive, AO. It dipped down to near neutral there, late January, then took off again uh, through February, reaching the peak for this winter, uh, just gone um, there. Where we are right now is uh, just there, so we are once again uh, pretty strongly positive with the Arctic Oscillation, the GFS Ensembles, which have a red light at the M forecast. Casting, uh, that we are going to stay with a very positive AO, certainly for the next week. But as we move towards the last stage of January, um, last stage of March, into the last week of month, we might just be seeing the first signs of a dip in the AO. We might be seeing the first signs of uh, maybe the AO going to neutral, possibly to uh, even in slightly negative conditions for the first time since sort of the second half of December. So had a very long run of positivity of the Arctic Station, but we might now be seeing the first signs of a change as we go towards the last stage of March. We may be seeing the first indications of some uh, genuine sort of pattern changes taking place here within the northern latitudes, possibly seeing the first indications of the uh, very, very intense stratospheric polar vortex that we have had through this uh, winter and into early spring, seeing the first signs that that's beginning to ease off. Maybe even a few hints there of uh, high pressure of blocking beginning to get going up over the Arctic. I think it's a little bit too early to say that, but definitely the trend is downwards with the Arctic Oscillation as we move into the second half of March. So it will be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, as we move into like the last week or so of month, will we start to see this very intense uh, stratospheric polar vortex that we have for months and months and months? Will we start to see the end to it and a significant weakening? We shall see. Northern Atlantic Oscillation observed and forecast uh, looks like this. So again, the black line shows where we've been with the NEO, red lines of the MRG, GFS ensembles are forecasting the NEO to go. Again, it's just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state, isn't driving anything in its own terms, just tells us what the atmosphere is doing. Uh, looking and measuring the air pressures in the North Atlantic this time. Um, so when the uh, when the NAO is positive, you have low pressure on ice and high pressure through the Azores. And it's the reverse of that when the NAO is negative. You have high pressure towards Iceland and low pressure through the Azores. So where we are right now with the NAO is still in positive territory, as we have been throughout this winter. Again, it went positive virtually on the first day of December and has stayed positive pretty much ever since. The old day has gone down towards neutral, just there late January went down to very weakly negative NEO conditions but overall yes the NEO has been in positive territory throughout the whole of this winter and GFS ensembles are forecasting the NEO to stay positive even towards the latter stages of um Last stages of March. So there's not much sign of the NAO moving. It looks like any movement that does occur within the indexes and thus within the atmosphere 
is really with the Arctic. It's the Arctic that we're going to have to look at first, perhaps, for signs of a bit of a change. We shall see if we can play on that over the next few days, of course. Uh, these were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks from old West Central, looking at London. Uh, yeah, today, red light is third year upper air temperature average for London, starting off above average at the moment. It's very mild out there today, and we'll be again in the south tomorrow. By the end of the week, we go colder, um, but not for long, really. It looks as though overall the upper air temperatures are trending above average as we move into the second half of uh, March. We also see from precipitation that the worst of rainfall appears to be over now. So um, quite a bit of dry weather coming up until the weekend, but a bit unsettled over the weekend into early next week. And then probably reasonably dry through next uh, week once again. Not complete dry, there are precipitation spikes in there. So it's not totally uh, a done deal that we're going to build up high pressure through the middle part of March. But certainly that looks quite a lot drier than anything that we've seen for uh, quite some time. Temperature anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of March, below average for northern parts of the country. So Scotland and Northern Ireland coming out below average. England and Wales uh, forecast to be slightly above average. Also looking quite cold across parts of Norway and even uh, southern, um, or northern I should say, Sweden, southern Sweden and Denmark looking quite a lot milder though. Precipitation anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of March, near normal to possibly still being a bit above average for northern western parts of the country, near north for England and Wales. Uh, not a particularly big deviation. It does look very, very, very gradually. We are starting to see a drying trend appear within these anomaly maps. That's how the GFS is looking for Friday. So on Friday, we're putting down quite a coldish sort of northerly wind, but a cold snap at the end of the week. And into week, have an extra low pressure is coming in. Off the Atlantic, that will bring more rain uh, with it. That clears away early next week. Winds turn back into the north again. So it starts to get colder through the early part of next week. But we do build up this ridge of high pressure. That brings us drier conditions as we move in towards the middle part of next week. Notice how weather fronts are getting, or, or uh, the jet stream with weather fronts getting pushed out towards the far northwest of the country with this black line just here. As the high pressure takes over through next week, it should be turning uh, drier. That's how we look as we get towards day 10. High pressure is in control of where it's rather a flabby area of high pressure, but it should bring a reasonable amount of dry weather with it. And that high pressure actually intensifies as we move in towards the extended range with a 6 o'clock GFS run. Centred somewhere over southern uh, Norway or southern Sweden, so bring the wind in from the east, but the origins of the air sort of south of east, so at least initially not particularly cold. However, this GFS run does pull in quite a cold easterly in the end. It sets up a proper Scandinavian height. It mounts that bridge to a proper Scandinavian height, 1,050 millibars. It does actually start to drag in a proper cold, long fetch east. If you follow the ice bath back, you can see that the air is actually originating from up here around this high pressure, plunging across uh, most parts of Europe. So that does turn things increasingly cold, actually. As you move in towards the last week of March, as the upper air temperatures show the minus 5 Celsius iceberg pushing through the UK. Um, and you see how the ice bars follow back to the minus 10 Celsius ice firm in the western part of Russia. And then we do actually generate a bit of an area of low pressure by the end of this GFS run, which gets us to Thursday, 26th March, underneath the block. Um, and this is the reason we see that the uh, GFS ensembles are beginning to move the Arctic Oscillation down towards negative territory late on. It's because of this high pressure over Scandinavia potentially starting to get itself towards Iceland and Greenland. And uh, that starts to allow low pressure to generate underneath the block. And so we finish up actually with quite an unsettled cold and potentially even quite wintry scenario. That's the 26th of March. Um, and it would depend on the exact sort of uh, parameters within the atmosphere in terms of upper air temperatures and dew points, all of that kind of thing, uh, thicknesses again, uh, whether that will be rain or whether we will get a dump of snow from that. But certainly late March is not, um, it's not too late in the year to get snow. And uh, that's the sort of pattern that can produce some late uh, season snowfalls. So uh, again, it's like two weeks away. It's very unlikely to verify um, it's just that we saw within the uh, within the Arctic Oscillation Observer forecast that some of the GFS ensemble members are definitely now starting to play around with the idea 
of blocking within the northern latitudes uh, as we get towards the latter stages of March. So it's one to keep an eye on, nothing to be overly alarmed about at the moment, but we may start pulling some colder air later on in the month, we shall have to see about that. Let's have a GM looks, and uh, again we've got a bit of a cold snap coming up on Friday. And then into weekend, low pressure continues to keep things quite unsettled, uh, really. Early next week, we start to build up a bridge of high pressure both to our south and to our east. It's gradually turning things drier then through the course of next week. And quite mild winds are coming up from the south here as we go into second half next week. So I think that could easily lift temperatures into the low to mid-teens Celsius. Uh, by day 10, though, just a few hints that it might start to go unsettled again. Slow pressure begins to try and come back in off the Atlantic. So uh, the GM is not as convinced about any sort of high pressure uh, domination in the second half of March as, um, for instance, the uh, GFS appears to be. And then we've got the ECMWF. That shows low pressure cooling away to our east on Friday, turning wind into north. Bit of a cold snap at the end of the week. Bit chilly into weekend and unsettled with low pressure continuing to move in from off the Atlantic, bringing further spells of rain. Another little cold snap uh, there. Whoops, we've gone backwards, so let's push forward. So another little cold snap there uh, on Monday the 16th as winds turn back into the north again. Then a ridge of high pressure building in from off the Atlantic. That turns us drier again. Probably night frost under that area of high pressure, but by day, I would think pleasantly um, uh, pleasantly dry and uh, quite warmish in the March sunshine. Uh, and heading up towards the end of this ECM run, which gets us to Friday 20th of March, we're still under high pressure. So the ECM wants to produce quite a extended area of high pressure lasting for several days next week. And um, not in a position to bring in anything particularly cold either. So actually, that's a very pleasant spring-like type week that we have setting up next week with the ECM. So a lot of um, variation uh, uh, within the sort of model output. Not necessarily in terms of the idea of high pressure. It does look as though we will get high pressure next week. But exactly where the high pressure goes, exactly where it sits, that's where the uncertainty and variation is coming in. And of course, that's important in terms of the overall feel of the weather. The high pressure is in this sort of position where the ECM has it, then obviously that's going to be uh, quite a spring-like uh, type scenario. Conversely, though, the GFS is trying to get it further and further northwards, and that could start to allow cold air to tuck in from the east and from the northeast. And of course, we've got the GEM also by day 10, so I have to bring the Atlantic back. So a lot to consider with this high pressure as we uh, go through the next few days and try to pin down exactly where this high pressure is going. Uh, this is a precipitation type forecast based on that it's, uh, ECM run from tometio.com. Just wanted to include this to show that we are going into a drying train uh, next week. We start off relatively unsettled though, uh, wintry showers in the north and west and still some longer spells of rain in places too. Into the weekend, again quite unsettled, low pressure heading in for off the Atlantic at weekend, bring spells of rain as well. But next week, winds turn into north, so it does turn colder, but at the same time, high pressure reaches in from the west, it starts to turn drier. And you see how the rain's been pushed out towards the far northwest there on 17th of March next week. I think that's Tuesday next week. The uh, low pressure of the rain's been pushed away to the northwest, returning mostly dry through the early and uh, middle part of next week. A little bit of rain here and there, but much, much drier next week than we've seen for quite some time. And even up towards day 10, there's a lot of dry weather uh, on offer. So the ECM is definitely, or the ECM operation run anyway, is definitely going for a drier solution by day 10. These are the options we got on the table with Emmy Summer Summers today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office gets us to be 20th of March. Our 15 members of the ECM Summers with high pressure, more or less over top of coach. Obviously, that's going to be mainly dry. 14 have the high pressure across sort of Denmark, that sort of area, bringing a bit of an east wind. That could be a bit chilly. A lot of dry weather, of course, with that ridge, but it could be a bit chilly. 12 just here with low pressure to the north and high pressure over to west southwest that could still have some influence from the atlantic that could be the most unsettled scenario and um, then we have 10 down here which does include the ecm control and operational run the operational run is run we've just been looking at of course that has us again more or less under high pressure at day 10 and a lot of dry weather on offer so by day 10 most of the ecm ensemble members have us dominated by high pressure 
How long that lasts, though, remains to be seen. These are the options we've got in two weeks' time, which gets us to the 25th of March. We have 18 members of the ESA ensembles then, but actually look quite unsettled with low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. So, obviously, that's breaking down the region, turning us unsettled again. 15 have us under a Scandinavian high. This would be kind of like the GFS 6 o'clock operations run solution. That would have us under potentially quite a cold easterly. 11, setting up high pressure to the south, or taking high pressure to the south, having low pressure to the north. That's a flat westerly type pattern, and probably starting to turn more unsettled to the north as well. And then 7, have high pressure sort of to the north, northwest. Quite dry with that, but could be a bit chilly, uh, or maybe even quite cold with winds coming in from a north to north easy direction. So again, exactly where this high pressure is going in the longer term, uh, is going to be quite an important factor as we get towards the last week or so of March. Certainly does look as though by sort of the middle to last part of next week, high pressure will be dominating the weather and bring us a lot of dry weather and break us out of this very unsettled weather that we've been in for several uh, months. But how long that lasts and where the high pressure goes is going to be quite important as we come towards the last week or so of uh, March. These are the CFSV2 500 millibar high dominant flow charts broken down to weekly periods. Finally, uh, the first week period takes us from the 10th to the 16th of March. The coming week looks quite unsettled. Low pressure is over and to the north of the country. We're bringing in westerly winds as well. So it continues to be pretty unsettled for the next few days. Week 2 is the 17th to the 23rd of March with above average heights to the east through the country and to our west as well. That's setting things down. Maybe not immediately so, but it would be setting things down and certainly turning us drier. Could be a little bit of an easterly fee with that though, so not necessarily all that mild. In fact, could be a little bit on the cool side actually. Week 3 takes us to the uh, 24th to the 30th of March with above average heights again to our east and below average heights to the west. So that's having a go at turning us a bit more unsettled again, I think, actually. Uh, so that's bringing some rain back into northern western parts of the country. And then week four is the 31st of March to the 6th of April. And then high pressure is dominating. It's sitting just to our east. Low pressure out to the northwest. That will be dry, potentially quite warm. Bring the winds up from a southerly to southwesterly direction. So definitely high pressure is going to be more involved in the weather in uh, the next week to 10 days. We can say that definitively as we go through next week, we've got a strong trend here for high pressure. Obviously, there is variation within the model output as to where the high pressure goes in the longer term. Will it go north and pull in colder easterly winds? Will it sit close to the country? Or will it even uh, slip away and allow the westerlies and the low pressure areas to come back in? Uh, that's all to be revealed and to be resolved. But definitely the trend is still there for higher pressure next week to give us at least some drier weather. Uh, right, don't forget to check out the ECMWF 30-day uh, look ahead. Tomorrow we've got the five-day forecast coming up and, of course, have another week 10-day video update as well. I've got a few pictures to share with you tomorrow uh, as well. So, um, yeah, come back for tomorrow's videos. But uh, for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.